Whew. Let's go. Hi there, hope you're having a good day. Welcome back to another video. Today I'll be picking out the top 10 basketball shoes from Chinese brands, including Li Ning, Wave Wade, Anta, Peak, and so on. Over the years, their product quality has significantly improved, even though prices are going up too. Anyways, I know that, uh, let's say the Nike Kyrie's, KD's, and LeBron's are still the most popular shoes out there. But if you wanna go a different way on the court, these are not only great performers, but they also make people go, oh, what shoes are you wearing? You know. And recently I've had people ask me what shorts I'm wearing. So I think it's time that I introduce you to Kinetic Kings. Uh, well, I'm sure a lot of you have seen pictures of their amazing products on social media. This video is brought to you by the good people over at the brand. Man, they really make the best mesh shorts out there. I've been wearing their fundamental shorts casually, as well as on the court for basketball. The shorts are comfy, breathable, very stylish. They have a lot of dope designs for you to choose from. Uh, most importantly, they are a perfect throwback fit, meaning that they will be above the knee. And I would recommend going true to size. So get the same size as what you normally wear in shorts or sweatpants. And they really have some of the most unique pieces out there. I really love their new Inferno Horizon one. A little mismatching action. They're based in LA, so you got this three-peat championship edition. Also, lightning on the moon matches the Son of Fash perfectly. I'll leave the link in the description for you to shop on the Kinetic site, and don't forget to use my code for a discount. Back to the list, before the top 10, I also wanna give four great budget options from Chinese brands. Uh, Shadow 4 and Ice Blood V2 from Wave Wade, DVD1 uh, or SD1 from 361 Degrees, and Sniper 2 from Rigorer. Um, those are all priced at 100 bucks USD or below. They all have their pros and cons. If you'd like to know more about them, I have a separate video on each, so you can look it up on my channel page. Oh, and uh, 808 3 is on the way. Uh, so because I didn't put a time constraint on this one, I just want to talk about their newest versions instead of like 2023. So that's why I didn't put the 808 2 on here. But most of you already know, those were in my top 10 overall last year. Great shoe also. All right, so starting off at number 10, I have the Anta KT8. A great underfoot cushion, very consistent grip. Dust pickup is also not an issue. It's just a shoe that will take quite some time to fully break in. Not so friendly for those who have high volume feet because the upper will press down against your feet a little bit. Yeah, the stiffness eventually goes away, but just took a long time for me. And this convertible collar where you can switch from a high top to low top with these buttons is kind of a gimmick to me. Like as a high top, it's all just empty space in between. So it's not like it improves the ankle support. I didn't really see the point, but performance wise, nothing disappointing. Clay's newest shoe, the KT9 was recently unveiled too, by the way. Next up at number nine, I have the Fission 8. In a sense, they're sort of like a budget friendly version of the Waveway 10. Very bouncy in the heel. Forefoot also has boom in it, so responsiveness is up there. This cool shell upper is super breathable. Also, it's very durable too, so to me, they sort of became an outdoor specific shoe, especially for the summertime. Quite a few nice colorways to choose from on waveway.com. I guess the only thing is, if you have really wide feet, this is slightly on the narrower side, especially in the midfoot area. At number eight is none other than the Owl City 11. Just a solid line in general that you can't really go wrong with. I said the Fission 8 might not be so waifu friendly, but these are. Pretty spacious in the toe box. The materials are forgiving, but that's also where some people have problems with, apparently, from what I've heard. Just from my experience, I use them outdoors. They're holding up well. Li Ning's tough rubber will last you a long time. Uh, I also love the core feel. Extremely smooth transition. Moving on at number seven, I have the Anta Shockwave 5. Yeah, this is basically the first shoe that Kyrie endorses after signing with Anta. Well, he's mostly worn the Pro version, but that price tag on the Pro version, I think is pretty nasty. I saw Bobby Portis playing in this version the other day. The best part about these is the minimal dust pickup. Like this was probably the also that picked up the least amount of dust on any type of court out of any shoe that I played in. So traction was excellent. Full lens nitrogen missile is Anta's premium setup. Only downside is soreness for those like myself who have flat feet and slightly wide feet, uh, but it's tolerable. The next shoe, I recently did a video on them, the Sonic 11. I'll keep it short, very typical Li Ning shoe, very standard setup, however, it just works so nicely right from the start. This is the best model out of the Sonic line, in my opinion. That crazy curve shape gives you a really smooth ride. 
Similar to the Fission 8, it also features a cool shell upper. So you know the ventilation is gonna be great. Compared to the Fission 8, I have this higher mostly because of the better stepping comfort and easier braking process. Okay, now we're at the top five. Here I'd like to remind you that I'm basing my list pretty much entirely on performance. All right, so don't be mad at me for this one because uh, I pretty much couldn't find a major weakness on these guys. The Chaodan Feng Tzu 6 Pro. Some may call it QD Sports now, but it really is the funny knockoff Chinese Jordan brand. Yeah, so whenever people ask me what these are, the first thing I say, it's the Calden Johnson shoe. Great cushioning, super loud and squeaky also, that gets you to a hard stop every time. Standard true to size fit, and slightly below average weight. A fantastic low top option. Maybe the only problem is with the brand itself. I think they're one rebrand away from being a great brand. I mean, at least change that logo. Gosh, it's embarrassing. In English, this is called the Blade 6, I believe. And uh, they also came up with a Feng Tzu Rice, which I've heard is even better. So yeah, performance only, this is the top five. At number four, I have the Peak Andrew Wiggins 1. Uh, this is his actual first signature shoe, by the way, not the Triangle series. If you like something that is very low to the ground, with amazing traction and good core feel, this can for sure get the job done. I got these in the Switch version. So they came with two sets of drop-in missiles. They use different technologies, but with both, I wouldn't say the foam is the soft and plush type. Are they comfortable? Yes. So the Peak AW1 is the only Peak shoe on my list this time. Well, I did really like a lot of their other shoes, but for the sake of this video, we're not gonna go too far back. Top three now, of course the Sun of Flash has to be on here. One of my favorite shoes to play in this year. It gives you a little bit of everything. Bounce, traction, Decent materials, no discomfort or anywhere pinching against my feet. I think a lot of you would agree with me on this one. I mean, I pretty much heard mostly positive feedbacks in the comments about them. And the three colorways are basically sold out on Wayfoy.com by now. They're definitely an eye-catching one on the court too, with the shiny reflective flash symbol. Retail price was not expensive to begin with, and great outdoor shoe. At second place, not from Wave Wade, but from Li Ning, is the Li Ren 3 V2, also known as the Sharp Edge. So the 4 just came out, by the way. If you want to see a video on those, please let me know in the comment section. If there's enough interest, I'll do my best to get them. But the 3 V2, the low top version, is already a nearly perfect shoe based on my experience. Link to my video on those, I'll put on the top right corner. And once again, this shoe really just does it all. Finally, the best shoe as of now from all the Chinese brands to me is the Waveway 10. Easy pick, almost a no-brainer number one pick too. And this applies to the regular version and the low top, by the way, because uh, performance-wise, they're pretty much identical. It also is insanely grippy. I mean, just that super loud squeak can tell you something about its traction. If you want a very bouncy shoe, I mean, this is hella bouncy. I know folks who really enjoy using these for volleyball too. Again, maybe the only thing to hate about them is that price tag. But otherwise, the Waveway 10 is good for multiple positions and different playing styles. I think this pink cherry blossom one is really nice and just pops on the court. There's also an orange colorway coming up. I'll leave a link in the description. There should be a few sizes left for the pink one, the low top. So that concludes it for the top 10 hoop shoes from Chinese brands that I would recommend. Uh, some of these are still like a if you know, you know type of shoe, while some are already pretty popular choices, even here in North America. Either way, I think these are all very solid options, just based on their encore performance. I honestly could have done a top 15 too. With that said, I probably left out a few other good ones. So let me know which shoes you've enjoyed playing in from Chinese brands. I'm always curious to try different stuff when it comes to sneakers, just maybe not the blatant copycat ones. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you on the next one.